Good morning, I'm Adam Harris, and this is The Day Ahead for the week commencing Monday the 30th of July. So we've got quite a bit of news this week, uh, not specifically out calendar news not scheduled for Monday per se. Don't forget we've got the regulatory changes occurring soon. But we also have a series of interest rate decisions uh, out of different countries, including the US and the UK. We've also got potentially non-form payroll on Friday. So we are likely to have a volatile week. That being said, if we look at how the week finished, the US dollar fixed, finished with mixed results. So currencies are likely to continue to be a bit uh, haywire and then moving on to cryptocurrencies they did actually finish quite strong so they seem to know where they want to go for the future now of cri uh, climbing and increasing in value then moving on to the commodities well metals are likely to just ping around until they know what the US dollar is going to do and of course what we've got is oil finished not really as strong as I was expecting and then moving on to the global indices as well as the equities in focus we got very much mixed results there across the board we actually some finished strong some did not finish strong so I think let's go to the charts and I'll take you through in more detail so I mentioned how we're going to see a lot of indecision at the moment starting off with the US dollar index here on currencies just you can see here the last few days pretty much going sideways all the moving averages on top of each other and price on top of that so the average price just pretty much going sideways so we're likely to have a consolidation breakout at some point but just uh and it's this week would make sense if we're going to have a look at euro dollar you can see here that uh <clears throat> excuse me that there's no clear direction in terms of where we're going um but that momentum is still looking actually largely bearish the potential for a move to continue to the downside still looks like it's potentially on the table uh looking at cable as well we keep producing these bearish candles quite a bit of negative news coming out fundamentally speaking and so likely to see that push down to the to the downside although there's no reason why we couldn't have a longer term retracement which would have been very nice to have price come back up to 1.38 and then continue down uh, if we're simply just not getting that strength, then we're likely to consolidate and move down. So Euro GBP as well, come back into that buy zone, potential bullish candles. We'll see how that unfolds uh, today and tomorrow, moving to the upside. So that was the one swing trading opportunity I was having a look at, Pound CAD as well. That's continued to move down. It's now back at these previous lows. Now what I might do is have a look for it to come back to 1.72 and test in these previous lows here and form a bearish candle looking for a swing trading opportunity to the downside if it does a retracement. And then, for example, having a look at Pound Swiss that was also on my watch list, no clear direction here. We're going sideways. So it's been, it's pretty much the case for uh, most of the other currency charts as well. So if there was anything else, I would draw your attention to it. So I think on that note, let's go and have a look at some of the other markets. With the cryptocurrencies, you can just see a Bitcoin's having pulled back into the uh, moving averages. We've got the 50, 20, and 10 in a bullish formation. So looking to see that break to the upside and starting to make a run for 9,600, 9,600. So that's uh, looking nice and bullish there, whereas Ethereum and Litecoin are kind of forming a bit of a consolidation pattern here. Um, likely to follow through on Bitcoin and move to the upside if it continues up. Uh, Litecoin as well, you can see here, very similar. Looks like it's just consolidating ahead of another move to the downside, but uh, should be some kind of correlation with Bitcoin as well. So my expectation, first expectation is if we get stronger moves on Bitcoin to the upside, we will also get that on Ethereum and Litecoin. In commodities on the move, you'll just see here we've got a couple of bearish candles. So if we do get that strong dollar, we'll see these continue to break to the downside. And they're looking, as I said, just a little bit more bearish than bullish as well. Platinum here, just pushing to the downside. We might find that we end up getting a big move at some point uh, in either direction. So this just this stalling behavior is uh, is a little bit concerning just because it leads to a breakout. And so just cautious there. With gold here just pushing to the downside so this is leaning towards the downside leaning towards a weaker a weaker gold and weaker silver as well you can see here pushing to the downside so i'll just be looking to see this break these lows and follow through with that with uh, carbon emissions pretty much uh, expecting this at some point just to connect to the moving averages and same thing this is a consolidation likely to have a reaction and then move uh, and then continue to move up within the next two to three candles usually if it maintains this nice healthy trend so that's usually within the next couple of days uh, and then we've got us crude oil you can see here same thing again just largely going sideways uh, and same thing again with us crude oil there's just not a lot going on same thing with oils we could have a big move to the downside or to the upside so everything is just pretty much kind of uh, treading water until it uh, decides what it wants to do and so this will be something hopefully by tomorrow we've actually got something going and the markets are starting to move 
looking at the global indices, starting off with Wall Street, a nice healthy trend here. What I'm looking for here is a pullback into the moving averages. Alternatively, to stay where it is and uh, with the previous high for the moving averages to come up and connect with it and then form a bullish candle and look to continue to the upside. With S&P 500, same thing again as we're still in the buy zone. So bullish candle today or tomorrow makes the most sense. Uh, but seeing a little bit of a deeper pullback there, just uh, highlighting that in comparison as well. US Tech 100 now starting to break the lows here. So this now, this uptrend is now pretty much done and finished. If we have a look at this on the weekly, this is more than likely a weekly pullback. Okay, so here I'm going to expect the price to come back into 7,200 at the very least and form uh, a bullish candle. So this is something that I don't expect. Uh, well, what would make the most sense is actually to get a move down. It's not very far away and then reject that and form bullish by the end of the week if we do get the normal behavior if the markets continue. Also interesting, just looking at UK 100, you can just see there's no clear trend at the moment. There's a good 10 days worth of no real clear direction there. So uh, the, what are we looking for here really is to see if we maintain higher lows, ultimately to break through 7,700 to the upside. I spoke about that last week. Then Germany 30 as well. Pretty healthy trend here. Looks like it's going to pull back into 12,700 and hopefully produce a bullish candle there as well and just maintain that trend to the upside. So some slightly different trends across the board here. Hong Kong, unfortunately, just because we didn't get enough of a move to the upside, I was looking to see us. I was hoping we would come up and test 30,000 so we we get a bit of a clarity on, on what's going on here. So for the moment, I'm expecting this to kind of stay where it is. Uh, if it does start to come up and break this previous high here as well of 29,132, then that will help with that uh, longer term bullish move to the upside. Australia now struggling to get through 6,300. So likely to see that tread water and try and test that as well. And that's pretty much it for the industry. So there is uh, still leaning towards the bullish side, but also some mixed, uh, some mixed charts there. As we move on to Apple under equities and focus, you can see we've just pulled back into that buy zone. 195 now showing some good solid resistance there. Again, looking to see if price can just stay where it is ultimately and then take another run at that level or if we're going to get some kind of a bigger market reaction. On Rio Tinto, still producing a bearish candle here. So a lot of indecision going on. No clear direction. We're still technically in an uptrend. High lows, high highs. So again, this area of 4100 representing a nice area to go uh, bullish candles and set up to go long. So next couple of days should bring clear clarity on that Amazon as well starting to show some larger candles increased volatility similar to what we did uh, going back to the 27th of April and uh, it's still in the buy zone so uh, nice round number there as well 1800 so let's see uh, 1800 let's see if we can get a bullish candle out of that so a lot of these you can see be, make a lot of sense to do that Facebook been doing quite well recently obviously other than that big massive gap down which has shocked the market so the question is now what's going to happen as I was saying uh, last week, look and see it find some support on the monthly. It's back in the buy zone. So look and see if it could find some support with everything else. Not really sure what it wants to do. We can not really expect Facebook to do that either. Then we've got Ocado. It's going to pull back into these moving averages. One uh, 1100 and then probably make another move to the upside. Also showing some resistance there. EasyJet, no clear direction. You might as well actually move on. Netflix. Netflix, no clear direction here either. You could just see just all sitting within this candle, also waiting for that bit of a move there. It's actually interesting to see how it's across most of the markets as well. But Premier Oil as well, my expectation is to see this attempt to get through 130 just because we've got some resistance there and then make a move for 135. And then finally on Imperial Brands, all right, so now we've had no kind of, we had some resistance there at 29.50. Produced a bullish candle. We didn't break the high of that. We produced another bullish candle. We haven't broken the high of that. So this is looking more like a consolidation of these previous highs. And again, with all the other charts, it looks as though we're just going to have to wait and see. But this can all happen on a Monday as well. So uh, hopefully we get some of this clarity uh, unfolding throughout the day today. On that note, folks, have a great day. And I will chat to you tomorrow.